The bulls had crowed, it's an unending rally the Fed had bestowed. So they sold volatility by the boatload. And they even hoped that stocks would erode so they could confidently then reload. And then head up the road, long by the truckload. What they didn't know in this naive mode, things could implode before they could offload. And volatility sellers, all they could do was head for the commode. So they did reap what they sowed. And for so many, so much is owed. They didn't heed the warning this analyst had forebode. And more of that is coming from this one that's mustachioed. Well, I'm going to the city and I'm going to do a city show. And I know all my fans want to learn how to make some dough. I've been cruising up and down for trades each and every night. And with my iPhone excited, I know we're going to get it just right. I'm getting inside your mind, we'll have a real good time. We're going to trade today, we got to trade today. Go ahead, sleep. Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the uh, Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what might happen in the next week, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market suffered its second week of severe selling, sending the indexes into multiple waves of declines, big freefalls that we're seeing. The Dow actually suffered two separate days of declines over a thousand points and made this the worst week since 2008 on a percentage basis. Stocks were ripe for a correction for sure, but a lot of complacency about that extreme low volatility in the sense that you could just sell volatility no matter what really exacerbated the situation. And these days, of uh, it's easy to sell uh, volatility and be short uh, volatility and uh, those esoteric uh, volatility products. Those are gone, and all of that ended this week as the world changed in a very significant way, at least the trading world. As implied volatilities now look like they're going to be pretty much embedded in this mid-20s to high-40s area and even popping into the 50s in moments of panic. Well, last night, we had a six-hour shutdown uh, in the government, and that budget deal uh, did get signed Friday morning uh, while you were sleeping. Uh, it's just going to fuel the fire of the problems that we have, this uh, a, a huge a budget deficit that we're looking at, more debt and more borrowing, and $1 trillion deficits that we're going to have going forward, $1 trillion plus now as the deficit continues to grow, and borrowing essentially from foreign countries just to pay that debt. Um, this week's bond auction went really poorly. And get used to it. Uh, as the government's going to have to pay higher yields to get uh, all of these bonds sold, all of the new ones, a trillion plus every year, plus all of the massive rollovers they have to do. And that's going to grow as interest rates go up, of course, because, well, they're their debt is going to go up uh, based on all the money that they owe and all the money they have to borrow. And that's going to make for very rocky financial markets going forward. Uh, the stock bull may not be over, and this certainly may be a correction or another one of these mini bears that we've had. But um, given the way this market has changed, uh, we're, we believe that we're going to see a much different situation, and uh, it's going to give many investors a much more difficult time, even if we go up and test those highs or make higher highs in the market in the coming uh, months or year. Um, it's just a very different situation that we're looking at, and the nature of the market has changed 
very significantly. Let's take a look at our 60-minute chart of the S&P 500, uh, where we look at um, the uh, action overnight and during the trading session. And you can see in here that, well, we're on Friday. If you look all the way on the right, we're selling off again. Um, the, the selling that came from the previous week spilled over into the European markets over here, uh, where uh, Europe was down and Japan were down overnight on uh, Monday morning. <clears throat> And then we had a big reversal in here uh, as the, the NASDAQ moves up 130 points off of its lows. But that's the nature of a free fall. Panic buying and panic selling. And selling came in and ES fell 150 points. There was a huge panic in here as the, uh, 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 the XIV blew up and there was massive buying on the close in the VX uh uh, futures uh, to try to cover up all that short volatility that they had. The Dow was interday down like 15, 1600 points. It closes down 1175 points that day. Uh, and Powell was signed in that day. Uh, very fitting, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, inflation worries are building, and that's what we're talking about here. Overnight on Tuesday, world markets dropped really sharply. Nikkei, Nikkei down 4.73%. And then uh, as we get into the trading day on Tuesday, the VIX collapsed and it brought a huge brief uh, moment of uh, relief. You had this big upward tick, it settled back and then you actually closed strong. You rebounded on the day right over there. The rebound stalled in Asia and we got a pullback overnight on Wednesday. <clears throat> Really weak bond auction caused a problem. And here is bonds cracked by one and a half points. That really got the selling came in, coming in again. And we got this another down wave here on Wednesday. Here are the... Um, Yields kept rising. The Fed, you know, the Fed come out and say, no biggie. Powell says, okay, so don't worry about this uh, decline in the stock market. And that's the kind of attitude we need. Laissez faire. Let the market settle them out. Uh, settle the stuff out on its own. And uh, really a lot of focus on these volatility products with tons of them getting shut down in here. And then we had uh, a bit of a bounce here on Friday and great uh, NVIDIA earnings. Uh, and you could see that. Well, they tried to hold up in here. China, though, got slammed 4.3%, was down 6%, and down 12.8% on the week. That's worse than uh, the U.S. market. From, I'm sorry, down 12.8% uh, from its peak, which is worse than the U.S. markets. And then on Friday, we had a little bit of a lift here on those NVIDIA earnings. But then selling came in, and here we are at midday, near the lows of the day in here, with the uh, S&Ps having fallen uh, from up some 20-something points to all the way down some 30-something points, a 50-point-plus move to the downside, as uh, futures had closed better, and they're even in worse shape now because they had a rally based on NVIDIA's uh, earnings. So that is a look at our 60-minute chart for the S&P 500, uh, and you can see that uh, looking at that. You've got uh, a, a week that just had these selling squalls, squalls, free fall moments that were just absolutely uh, enormous in there. So uh, that is just the nature of a market that has started a significant correction. Make sure you watch my big picture analysis of the stock market, which I did this week. It's a member video. We put a little clip of it out on YouTube, and it's really, I think, an important video for you to see uh, as uh, some things have certainly changed in here, and we talk a lot about that big picture. So you're going to want to watch that video. For the week, well, the stock market down uh, over 6%. All of the major indexes are there. Uh, the Russell slightly overperforming, down a uh, less, little less than 6%, but it's uh, still been a horrible week for the stock market. Bond market even down about one point in here. Can you imagine? What happened to the flight to safety bid? Well, historically, it used to be that the bonds were leaders. Uh, in other words, when yields went up, the stock market didn't like it. And uh, just in the recent decade, it was this big inverse correlation where anytime the stock market went down, the bond market went up in a flight to safety. But that safety bid only came in for moments uh, here during the week, and it disappeared really quickly as we got a pop-up on one of the panics in the stock market, and that then the 
bond market went straight back down. Uh, the 10 year yields about unchanged on the week up at 284 and they are going higher. The dollar went up all week long, about one and a third penny, uh, as uh, a bottom has formed in there in the dollar as this anticipation of higher rates is bringing the bid in. We believe it will be a, a rally that goes for some weeks. Uh, in what would be a temporary interim bounce uh, in the dollar. Gold, uh, as the dollar strengthened, gold went down about $20 and hit the target we had for the week based on a little head and shoulders top. Make sure you watch the end of the show where we do our short-term view. You're going to find that really interesting. Silver down about $0.35. Cents. Uh, and the oil market plunged. Um, huge decline, well over $5.00. Uh, as supply concerns really have hit the market. Our call for the year was a high of about 65 and a half. It got up just a little above that. Uh, and now we think the high for the year is in for oil. And uh, every time it gets up to that level, you see that what happens is, is that the rig counts go up. They went up very significantly. Oil shale producers come online and they start to pour the oil out and supply picks up. We had record production in the U.S. again. So uh, that's really what's going on. And uh, we have a very significantly changed world here uh, over these last couple of weeks. So that is uh, a look at the opening for the show, and we're going to get now into the best and worst stocks for the week. All right, for the best and worst stocks for the week, we do this every single week. We look all through our list of um, some 320 stocks. We follow 400 symbols with ETFs and futures. And then we do our uh, cycle analysis on these stocks. So uh, a lot of very interesting things that you're going to see in here. Um, I want to remind you before we get into these charts is to follow me on Twitter uh, at Ask Slim and be a, subscri a subscriber on our YouTube channel uh, so then you can see the things that we put out. Uh, and I think that you'll find them really interesting. Uh, also, when you look at the type of analysis we do, uh, it's cyclical analysis. There's only a few of us out there that really are well-versed uh, and uh, experts in cycle analysis. And I have a workshop coming out on it, which will be 21 videos long. It's just an amazing learning experience that you're going to be able to have. You can get on our list for a special price. It's going to be available in April. But if you go to the Ask Slim website to the bottom of the front page and click on Cycle Analysis Workshop, you can get on that list. And uh, if you get on there early enough, you'll be able to get in on this special pricing. This will be an uh, uh, a premium membership and uh, with uh, 21 videos you will not believe how much you're going to learn in there uh, so that's amazing and you can actually get our charts on your thinkorswim platform uh, um, td ameritrade they're our preferred broker and uh, if you would like to get our charts that's a level four membership and if you send me an email slim at asslim.com I will send you a special link to try us for a month for half price. So you'll get everything then, all of our level three information and all of our 250 plus videos for that half price special. So uh, I think you'll uh, learn a ton. 43 years I've been at this and uh, also been a facilitator coach for 23 years and a um, lot of experience that I bring together here. All right, let's get into our best and worst stocks for the week. We're gonna start out by looking at Twitter. Uh, Twitter uh, is a stock that we have been positive on, and you'll see that we've had positive cycle formations going on in here, and here is that Twitter chart. And uh, we're looking at a weekly chart here. The, the bulk of our cycle work is done on weekly charts, and we also do it on daily, and we do that on all of our 400 plus symbols that we that we look at consistently. Lots of uh, consistently, lots of work. Let's take a look at this section right in here, which are these bullish cycles. Why they're bullish is that well, they're bullishly configured. In other words, they've got higher bottoms and higher lows. You can see that in there. And then this interesting megaphone consolidation right in there and a little engulfing that really did not work. And then this big spike up into here. Now, this stock is actually in a buy zone for us because it's a really bullish pattern. It's pulling down in here. 
Uh, the earnings just were blowouts, fantastic, uh, and we really think it's uh, in great shape. We think that it's going to be in a corrective phase and zigging and zagging out here for another maybe five, six weeks, but overall this is really in our buy zone. And you can see our cyclical pattern on the daily charts in here. They really look like, you know, this is the short-term area where it's likely to get a bounce from. We're looking for a few days of a little more pullback in here and then again moving to the upside. So uh, this is a look at Twitter on our daily, our weekly on the left and our daily on the right. And that's what our charts look at, look like when we do uh, uh, all of this cycle analysis. So there's a look at Twitter, 21% gain on the week, just really good. And I don't have a lot to show you in the best of the week uh, because the market's been so far down. TripAdvisor gets this rally in here. It was up a 13% or so. It was up much more than that uh, on rumors, speculative rumors about some takeover. But when I show you the Expedia chart, um, we're not really overly optimistic in this one. You can see we think it's rolling over and then going to have further correction in here. Uh, as good gains as uh, we get these rumors in here and the earnings come out on February 14th. I'm not excited about it. In the worst of the week, I'll show you Expedia, and you'll get an idea why. TPR, uh, that's Tapestry, and that's the old Coach, uh, and uh, or now the parent company for Coach. And then you could see our cycle analysis in there, and what that called for is that it's the, the rally in here is likely to fade and get into this intermediate support zone. We'll look for a couple of weeks of pullback in here. It gains about 6% on the week. People must be buying high-end goods. Maybe it's the fact that the tax bill, maybe that did help the rich. Or maybe it's crypto money coming in here. Uh, if that's the case, well, these luxury goods are not going to get sold very much anymore because, well, cryptocurrency is getting crumbled on. So uh, this is a look at Tapestry. It looks to us like it'll pull back for just a few weeks, up about 6% on the week. Uh, next one to look at, SKX, that is Skechers. This is a really nice pattern. Now, why is it nice? I mean, it's bullish. And the, the reason that it's bullish is that this corrective period right in here, you can see that that's all you got was a week down. If you look at each of these corrective periods right in here, that's how these cycles lay out. They show you that those are the downward periods right in there. And the rising phases are where you get the rally. So here's your rising phases right in here. You can see that beautiful cyclical that you can see in there and what happened was is I'll zoom in in this a little bit and see how it broke out about around uh, above those multiple resistances you get this pullback right in here in this rally this is good and this says to me that you're going to get about another month or more of a potential advance here uh, in uh, Skechers and uh, I would say you could buy some dips in here big earnings in there uh, came out and they had uh, about stocks up about three Three point something percent on the week. Last one I want to show you is Nvidia. Just tweet, tweeted this one out this morning. As their earnings uh, came out, the stock was much higher. Now we we saw these big gains in here. It's only up now less than two percent. Uh, uh, it's actually down now for the week. It was up, sorry. Uh, and uh, it got down into this support zone right over here and then had this rally. But, and, and their game, the gaming side of this was good. And cryptocurrencies, the crypto uh, was stronger than they anticipated. But this is not a good pattern. And here's why we got bearish. I'm going to switch over to the daily chart. Now, we use multiple time frames. And when I get breakdowns on a daily chart like we had under that significant low, it has me believe that the weekly pattern or the intermediate pattern is failing. Gets up here to the 78.6%. This is where we tweeted it out. We said it's going back down to 208. And sure enough, it's fallen a, a ton, 15 points already since we've tweeted that out this morning. So uh, we believe NVIDIA is headed back down to the 208 area. And uh, their, uh, their pattern in here uh, to us is worrisome. And we, we're thinking that there's a potential based on this daily pattern on the right that a major top is formed uh, in NVIDIA. We're jumping the gun on that one a little bit because uh, we don't really have any kind 
kind of negative confirmation on the bigger patterns. Uh, we're just using the shorter patterns to tell us. And this stock was in a positive momentum for a long period of time. And this week it lost that positive momentum, turning neutral. So we think that uh, NVIDIA is likely to move to the downside again. That's the best of the week. And I've got lots to show you for the worst. All right, bad news, big drops, that's for sure, as we get into the worst uh, for the week here, as we switch over now, and we're going to start out by looking at Expedia. Now, of the 320 stocks that we look at, some 8 or 9% of them were down over 10% in the week. So I could be here all day showing you bad charts. We're just going to pick selectively the ones that were the biggest ones or the ones that have very much the worst pattern. So we're going to start out with Expedia, uh, the biggest loser uh, of the uh, widely helds that we look at in here. This is uh, a not a good pattern at all. It has been a bad pattern and we've been worried about it. Now you're going to see in here some more advanced cycle analysis where you see we have multiple patterns on the bottom in here. There's a, a minor a cycle and there is a major cycle that we're looking at in there. So you can see the big pattern right in here. These are the uh, what we'll call the dominant patterns right in there. And this was bullish and this was bullish. You could see that and then it made a new high. But then it broke down and configured negatively. In other words, this is where that cycle low is and it made a much lower or low. And here's the minor cycle patterns and here you could see this right in here as it fits exactly halfway and this is how those resolved right in here as they moved down sharply. That said the stock was likely to be in trouble, fail at resistance up over here as it got just to the 34 week moving average about halfway back and then rolls over again. So you can see in here that we're looking at a lot of trouble in here. Yeah, this looks like we're going to get a bounce. This decline, bottoming, then you get a potential rally in here and then big down again. We think if you get a rally in, in Expedia, it's likely to get whaled on. Their costs are going up. Earnings a big miss. And be careful about uh, trip and those rumors because if costs are going up, they're going up uh, for everybody in the group and uh, we're likely to see trip take a hit. There is that FIB extension zone. We could see the stock down here at 87 before this is over with, projected out into May. Now May is the time our big picture analysis projects trouble for the market all the way to that period. So that kind of an alignment with the bigger picture that we're looking at. Take a look at Chipotle, CMG, uh, as uh, we look at another stock with a major failure, down 13% uh, on the week uh, in Chipotle. Their earnings were a small miss, uh, but uh, analysts are really worried about this one that they could not get a turnaround. We think it declines into March. This is an unusual, what we call overlapping cyclical patterns in here, where we have a, a clear view of a bigger pattern and a smaller pattern that almost perfectly overlaps. And this nested area, as we call it, is the middle of March. So we think the stock is still going lower in here. Here's a support area down at around 232. That would kind of be our target for now, 232 on the downside. The home builders have been getting hit. The worst pattern that we can see in here in the home builders is Beezer. Look, it's got down right now to or just below that upward trend. We have a cyclical breakdown in here that occurred right at this level. You can see that. So these were the upward cycles, beautiful patterns going up this uh, uh, trend line in here. And then it falls short and breaks the low. That's bad. This goes down to April right over there and if think if you get a bounce in Beezer home uh, you can uh, sell that one. Interestingly, the rest of the group in the home builders, they've been taking giant hits. Also, of course, interest rates going up uh, and most of the, those, Pulte Home, Lennar, KB Home, they're very close to bottoming periods. I'd rather buy those than buy Beezer. Beezer's pattern in here is really bad. <clears throat> One of the stocks that I love to hate, I love that phrase, love to hate, is Yelp, Y-E-L-P. And uh, this one you can see just great picture of cyclicality where you see the actual dominant trends put in here. Look at that on Yelp where you could see the rising and declining. We call those directional components. And those were living right inside of those 
um, enveloped ranges that you can see for the big patterns. And uh, in here you could see a beautiful double top as this cycle and this cycle made the same top period. Nice diamond in there also. And then right over here you could see that this one right in here made a left shoulder, a rally, and then a mid-cycle decline, a rally for the right shoulder, and then rolling over. Yes, cycle patterns make head and shoulders. You can see that right in here. And then coming down, this decline points to March also. Uh, Yelp, uh, that one moves down sharply as 13% uh, loss on the week. Earnings miss, revenues miss. Just plain ugly, and we do not like their business model. And uh, lots of rumors come out on this one. It's on our riskiest for the year list, and I think this is one of the riskiest stocks. Oil, as we said, took a hit this week, a monstrous hit. And there was a lot of buying going on previously uh, in, in the uh, oil energy sector. Those stocks have taken a big turn and are looking really awful. Exxon uh, is down uh, on the week some 10%, 11%. And that one is really crazy. I mean, that one is so tied to the indexes. I actually bought a little Exxon just to nibble just today for a, a, a bounce. Okay, you got to buy something in here somewhere, right? So uh, Exxon, just this big 10% down move. But let's look at some of the rest of these in the group, and you'll get an idea of what we call some ugly breakdown patterns. We're going to look at the, a couple natural gas stocks first. Uh, Devon and Apache. Uh, here is uh, Devon right there, and there is your breakdown. You can see as it gets under that cycle low support, that violation is negative. The decline we're looking for is to test that old low around under 29. That points to April before that bottom comes. You can see a very bad breakdown in there. Apache APA, uh, an awful breakdown right in there. This one gets up into those big resistance zones and then just rolls over and dies. This points to May. There's so much that points to May for the bottom of a decline. Boy, decline out till May. That's what we're looking for. That's Apache, really ugly in here. Diamond Offshore. Take a look at this. Another one that's turned negative. When you see the colors in here, those squares, those are our colored phases that we look at. So that helps uh, uh, us with the analysis so that we can see when we get into a rising zone. And when you're in this green zone, it's rising. But when it breaks the cycle low, it turns red. And when it turns red, it's supposed to decline all the way through that time period, look what it did. Perfect. Here's what it did again. Rallied and then turned neutral and then declined right to this time period. No good rally there and another decline right to the lows. Just amazing cyclicality. And then the breakdown here that says it declines, yes, out into May. So lots of things just pointing to that. Diamond Offshore, bad trouble rig you can see in here. As this one also has a breakdown, gets underneath that support zone, under that cycle low, points to a decline into May. So uh, really uh, worrisome patterns in there. Yeah, I nibbled on a little Exxon, but that was only for the purpose of a bounce. We'll see if I get paid on that one or not. One stock, sadly, that I have to show you is Rand Gold, G-O-L-D. Um, this stock uh, was on is on my list for the best stocks for the year. And this has become one of the worst patterns right now. So if it's going to be one of the best stocks for the year, it's going to come when gold has, uh, the gold, the metal, uh, has a, a much better time of it, which I think starts in the spring. Here is Rand Gold, G-O-L-D, and you can see in here, uh, it breaks supports also. And that calls for a decline out to June. So that's really a bad pattern in there. And I would say that if it got a bounce and we got a bounce in gold, you could uh, sell that one. Um, sadly, um, that one has really turned ugly. Take two, TW, TTWO, uh, also in the gaming area. This one is rolling over and getting right down near that low. 34-week uh, moving average tends to be supports. This is rolling over in a way that I think is pretty serious. Uh, revenues had a big miss. It has this big decline in here. And the CEO is cautioned. <clears throat> 
about uh, the tech addiction that's going on based on, well, cryptos and mobile and all that. And this one also points to a decline out into April. We don't have it projected down as low as it should be. I could just grab this and show you where I think it's going to go down to this last cycle uh, area right there. Breakout uh, down to about 80. So that would be the type of pattern that we're looking for. And here I didn't update this one, but now you can see. So that points to a decline out into April, a really bad one. And that's another message for NVIDIA, which got this move to the upside not so good. Anyway, you just saw, uh, in, when you're looking at Rand Gold, one of the stocks that I thought was going to be great for the year, and now is broken down. One of the stocks that I thought was going to be in the riskiest category for the year was UPS. The reason was, besides the fact that it had gotten to a high price level, was that my sense was, and I said this in the uh, in the year-end show, that uh, Amazon was coming after them, and they were going to come out with their own shipping company uh, or own way to get packages and save some money because that's what they're trying to do. And they are just plain out disrupting this uh, uh, group in here uh, as UPS uh, and Federal Express collapse for the same reason that I was expecting. And here we have a big cycle break and a major top that you can see in here. This is UPS and uh, wow, 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 135 all the way down to 105. 30 points down in here, some huge 20% decline or something like that. This points to this decline coming to the end of March, but then I would say that you're going to get a bit of a rally and then uh, that relief rally will end and then you'll get another giant wave to the downside. Riskiest for the year uh, list and I would say that is accurate. FedEx, uh, its cousin, right with it look at that now there's our colored phasing in there this one has not broken down yet actually to do that it would need to get down here under 214 uh, and it's in this yellow corrective zone if it got under 214 it would then turn red I tell you what I think it's going to do it and that is a look at a bad bad stock uh, and a bad bad group when you look at those shippers that's it for the worst of the week and we're going to come right back with our short-term view for the coming week. All right, we do this every week. We look at daily charts. These are where our short-term uh, view exists. Uh, it's not like an interday view, basically, though we have some of our indicators that are inter interday indicators that we look at uh, when we look at these charts. Uh, we uh, do um, pay some attention to that our, our uh, market condition indicator. Uh, it does have some interday things built into it. And uh, by the way, for the stock market, those market condition indicators have now given up everything. And I'm going to show you that the um, uh, upward momentum is just over when you look at a lot of these things. So this week, we had a lot of changes in upward uh, in, in the things that had strong upward momentum. Mostly, upward momentum has been lost, and certainly in the indexes, uh, and some of them have now turned into negative momentum. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, cycle patterns and what we had said last week, we're about 70% accurate, which is a really good week. Uh, and we try to be 60 to 65 percent, and we're about two to one being correct. And uh, we struggled with that uh, while the stock market was going up and really giving us a hard time uh, based on corrections that we thought were coming that just were, they denied us that uh, as the market was so strong, but now things certainly have changed. The uh, light crude market uh, has gone from positive to negative momentum. And you can see that right in here uh, as that slim ribbon turns red. There's that red arrow right there. So you can see in here a big dominant cycle and these smaller cycles right in here. So there was supposed to be a low in here that has now run past. And you have this big reversal uh, in here. And so this pattern right in here 
is this big pattern. It's turned down already as far as we can see. Now as far as the small patterns go, we have two different scenarios in here and they're both not good. And that is that that we, we make a low right in here, we get a bounce and that bounce gets you up uh, to, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to call it uh, just up to near $62 and then fail. Uh, or uh, that's this pattern right in here, and then fail, and then rally, and then fail. That's the most optimistic pattern we can draw. The other one is that the low we were looking for actually came here. This is a lot like the stock market pattern. And what that then suggests is that this is a steeper and shorter pattern right in here. So we would still look for a potential bounce, but that would fail, maybe not getting near that 62, and then moving down again. We're going to call light crude a small bounce for the week. In this negative pattern, we're going to say it kind of holds. See right over here, the 78.6%, that 89-day moving average, that's around 58. So yeah, you could come down a little bit more and maybe have a tiny little up week as it tries to bounce. But we think that the risks are high in there and we'll call for a little bit of an up week, but it's not likely to be able to hold and then moving down again after that. As far as the dollar goes, well, it had a big week uh, as it gained uh, well over a penny. Sorry, that's not the dollar. This is the dollar. So what you can see is that it was in a steady downward move. As a matter of fact, as uh, I illustrate here on these three cycle patterns, you can see that there's a bigger one and a smaller one. So here's your big one right in here. You can see that. I'm just going to show you the big ones right there perfect alignments. Uh, this one runs a little long and then this one runs a little short right over here comes to the low right at this point. There you could see those patterns and now this turning up again right in there. So you can see this pattern here. Also the little patterns. You could see this right in here and we have those marked off for you. So those are the minor cycles right there. Beautiful cyclicality is the half cycles or minor cycles shape up perfectly. There you can see that one right in here. And now here's where you are right here. You can see that. So we've had that little bit of a rally <clears throat> in the resistance zone. We're going to look for a little pullback to this area of support, maybe around 89 and a half over this next week. But that would be a buy for us if we saw that happen, and we'd probably want to short the euro uh, if that happened. So we're going to call the dollar small down on the week and then up uh, as it gives some ground in there. The euro currency is the one we probably would trade, and that's the one we want to do. What we want to do is sell it. You can see it's gotten underneath this minor support right over there, and uh, we think a small bounce. So this is our sell zone right in here over uh, 124. That would be about a you know, a penny and a half, a euro and a half up from where it is right now. Uh, and we think it's a sell and then likely to move to the downside as our intermediate bigger pattern, the dominant one, which I'm not showing you, uh, is rolling over and uh, that's a problem. Upward momentum lost. You see that little down arrow right there? Uh, and uh, that often happens at the begin at the end of little cycles right in here. But when it does, it's usually not a good scenario. <clears throat> So it's going to take a little more downside in here to get momentum negative. We're going to look for a small bounce in here, exactly opposite of what we're looking for, the dollar, which is a small decline, uh, and then after that fail. So we think that the euro bounce is a sell when that comes. Next, we're going to look at the uh, gold and silver market, forward slash GC. These are kind of busy charts because we have a lot of analysis in here. So last week, we saw the head and shoulders form. Now, you can go watch that show. As you see right in here, this cycle low right over here brought you a rally and a little dip. But it was still positive momentum, so it went to a new high and then dipped. And then because the momentum was rolling over, that rally failed and then it broke the neckline and then came down exactly to the measurement to the support area that we thought it was going to come to. That's an intermediate support zone, an important area. Remember I said I thought the dollar was going to pull back for about a week? Well, we think we're going to get a bounce in the gold market that's going to last a brief period of time. We don't think it can get any real upside. We're going to look for one to two weeks in here uh, where it moves up and maybe getting up to 1235, 1240. 
but that's about the best we I'm sorry 1335 or 1340 but that's about the best that we can see in here uh, momentum clearly lost in here it was positive momentum as the slim ribbon turned right over here positive and then you can see the big rally that we got we were all over that one and now we gained some concern in here and we're going to look for only minor rallies in the gold market so that one bullseye it just hits our target perfectly silver market did a little worse than we expected <clears throat> is it got below our target and getting down now to the 78.6 percent Again, we see a choppy week in here, a bottoming right in here just about 1607. And then in about a little less than one or two weeks, then starting this upward move. So this could be a choppy week in here still. We're going to look for just small rebounds in here in the gold and silver market over these next one or two weeks. So uh, not a pretty situation overall when we look at this. And, you know, we still see the dollar being okay for some month or more. So that's going to mean that we get these bounces in the metals. They're probably not going to be able to hold up. Next, we're going to look at the, the Treasury market. We're going to look at the ZNs. Now, just a heads up, we were talking about a bottom coming on the intermediate patterns on our weekly charts. By the way, here's that rally that failed. That's exactly what we expected, and it came down to a new low. Here's the resistance areas in here, and they're still declining because we're still making new lows. But we expect these 10 years to kind of stall in this area of 2117, uh, 2130, and keep zigzagging in here. But a bottom is likely to form very soon. And uh, today we're getting a little bit of a safety bid in here uh, in the ZNs as they get uh, a pop, uh, but uh, we still don't think there's any real significant upside uh, in here coming for a little bit. We expect the stock market to get a rebound. Yeah, we're going to start talking about bounces, uh, and that's likely to get us to finish this pattern in here over this next week. We're going to call it a choppy week, maybe a little more downside progress, but in a bottoming, and then uh, after a few more days, then we're going to be headed up. And you can see our projection over here that we kind of chop around and then start to head up in the following week. We've got the same thing here in the 30 years. Uh, as uh, we have another several days in here, we think, before this bottom is made. And then uh, it then starts to move up. And this area up here is our targets. We thought it was going to get up to 46.22 last week. It got up a little bit higher and then failed. Uh, and uh, now our option bias indicator got too extreme oversold. So we are expecting that the downside has about had it and a bottom is forming in there. So we're going to start to think that uh, things are going to be looking up for the bond market pretty soon. And again, no runaway bond market, just simply a relief rally over maybe a month's period. Uh, and uh, again, we're looking for a stock market to go down into the spring. So that could extend out a flight to safety's bouncing period before the bond market resumes its bear market, we think, in a very significant way later in the year. We'll be doing a big picture on the bond market pretty soon. So that is a look at the bond market. Now, we have to look at stocks. Stock market, well, worst week since 2008. Free fall, um, just amazingly bad pattern. It was a couple weeks ago where we put in uh, uh, three different scenarios, but we were worried that the most likely pattern had become a sharp downside move and that a major top was forming as we got into a corrective period. And that certainly has happened. We have a lot uh, to look at here in this chart. You can see in here this downward motion. Now note, we've added in a half cycle right over there. And that half cycle is likely to give you a bounce. There's actually, let um, me just uh, activate that drawing right there and move it down. We're, we're nine days right over here uh, into this new cycle. Now, you, there's a lot of you out there that haven't seen the nature of these markets for a long period of time or ever. Now, when you get into free fall markets, what, what changes is that the mid-cycle periods in here bring sharp bounces. You see this one right over here that was a little early to be calling that, uh, and then it failed immediately. So we're going to look for more like we had right in here where they try to get up, but then they come down. This low period over here uh, points out to 
um, the uh, 23rd or so of February. That's where we think that you could actually get a real uh, trading bottom at that point. Trading on the long side at this point is insanity, even though I think you could get major bounce on the upside. We're going to look for the S&P 500 getting up to this area right over here at 2630 and then fail. So yeah, that would be like an 85 point bounce or something like that. It should come in the next, starting in the next couple of days and then not be able to hold on to that. That's a bold call because the market is coming down so hard. But you could see right in here, S&P's rallied from 25.96 uh, here up to 27.26. So that was a 130 point bounce. So we think we can get into that area. But Playing for that is crazy, and uh, any bottom is going to be temporary, and we think that this freefall nature that we had labeled right over here says that um, we're going to continue to be in a lot of trouble. We're going to look for a bounce in this coming week, uh, and that it's not going to be able to hold. The uh, NASDAQ NDX is the next one we're going to look at. And you can see in here the same type of a pattern uh, as it gets into this area where we should get a bounce. The upward targets are 6410. Um, that's right, 200 and something points up there uh, as it moves up, but it's down 122 points today. So uh, a big uh, decline that you can see uh, going on here, likely to bring big, bring big reactions to the upside that aren't able to hold. This one points to February 23rd also. So we're going to look for another one of these kind of nine-day periods coming that you can see right in here where you get the uh, rally and a decline and a rally and a decline. That's kind of the pattern that is shaping up in here. This is the most likely pattern that we're looking at in here uh, based on the market action that we see going on right now. Free fall nature uh, in a stock market and uh, that is uh, something you know that you know I've seen a lot of. And watch that big picture analysis uh, that uh, shows that I talk about four different markets that had um, made all-time highs and then fell off by some 10% in a couple of weeks, and what that meant to the overall market. You're going to want to see that, and I really encourage you to do it. Become a member at Ask Slim, and you'll be able to watch that video and all of our videos. Uh, I share uh, eight different categories of videos, uh, all about uh, tools for techs, all about learning charting, all the way to trading psychology, which I've been a facilitator in and certified for 22 years. So uh, just a ton of great information uh, for you to see. Uh, don't forget, follow us on Twitter at Ask Lim, uh, and uh, become a YouTube subscriber. Sign up for our cycle workshop uh, so that you'll learn more than you ever believed in 21 videos. Uh, and uh, I want you to be really careful. Not only is it crazy out there, but it's crazy in here right now. And we are always wishing you great trading.